Good morning and welcome on this Sunday the 2nd of January 2022 when we celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany. Those were the bells rung at St. Paul's in commemoration of the life of the late Archbishop Emeritus Desmond Tutu. Jesus was born to a Jewish family and was brought up in those traditions. Through Joseph, his descendants can be traced back to Abraham himself. But Jesus is not defined or limited by his background. Even at his birth, these boundaries are crossed, as we see in our celebration of the Epiphany. Today's Gospel reading, we hear of the wise men, or magi, who travel from the east, seeking the one born to be king of the Jews. They are directed to Bethlehem, where they find the Christ child in a manger. The importance of Jesus' epiphany or manifestation is that he came not only to bring deliverance or freedom for the Jews, but to be the saviour of the world. The good news is is for all, as the book of Revelation puts it, for those of every tribe and language and people and nation. The Magi represent part of this diversity of people who are drawn to Christ. They are outsiders, non-Jews or Gentiles. Someone called them representatives of the science and philosophy of the ancient world. We're not sure how many there were, traditionally three, They bought three gifts, frankincense symbolizing worship, gold, kingship, and myrrh symbolizing the suffering that Jesus would undergo. Strangely, the chief priests and scribes who gave them directions to find Jesus did not themselves go and find out what was happening. Jesus is described as the light of the world and invites all to respond to him. In the season of Epiphany, our readings move us away from any narrow view of an individual understanding of our faith in Jesus, to a wider view of God's intention for the whole of creation. We are also encouraged to continue to work as Jesus did in the world. Over this past week, we have been both mourning and celebrating the legacy of Archbishop Emeritus Desmond Tutu, who passed away on Monday last week. At this time of Epiphany, his life can be an inspiration to us, the life of one who showed a concern for all, one who desired to further the work of Jesus in the world in many different areas. I give a few biographical details of his life, much of which will be familiar to many of you. Desmond Tutu was born in Clarkstorp in 1931. His father was a teacher and his mother a domestic worker. He initially wanted to be a doctor, but unable to afford medical school, he trained as a teacher, as did Nomazilo Lia, who later became his wife. When the discriminatory system of Bantu education was introduced, Both he and Leah left the teaching profession. Desmond felt that the best way to serve his people would be as a priest. It's interesting how God can call one to service in different ways, even in a roundabout way, when some doors close and others open. (coughs) The Arch had a wide experience of theological education, as a student at King's College London, then as a a lecturer at the Federal Theological Seminary, FEDSEM and Alice, at that stage uh, near Fort Hare, before FEDSEM moved. He later lectured at Roma University in Lesotho. And while based in London, he was a secretary of a theological education fund associated with the World Council of Churches. And this gave him an opportunity to travel extensively in Africa. On Wednesday this past week, Bishop Reuben Philip, retired Bishop of our diocese, preached at a memorial service 
for the arch. They spoke of meeting up with him in 1969, when he himself was a student at Fetsim. He spoke of the influence that the Archbishop had had on his subsequent life and ministry as a priest and bishop. Well, Archbishop Desmond was <coughs> concerned, as we know, with many worldwide issues. He remained interested in people and expressing care towards individuals. Within the church, Desmond held various offices, Dean of Johannesburg, Bishop of Lesotho, General Secretary of the South African Council of Churches, Bishop of Johannesburg, and in 1986, Archbishop of Cape Town. Archbishop Desmond served within South Africa as well as beyond it, within the church as well as beyond it. For him, the good news of Christ was indeed for all the world. The Arch saw his role in the struggle against apartheid, in leading marches and mediating in conflict situations, and later chairing the Truth and Reconciliation Commission as part of the outworking of his understanding of the gospel of love for all people. Justice for him was indivisible. He stood for justice and fairness and equality in all spheres of life, promoting Ubuntu, interconnectedness and interdependence of humanity, in fact of all life. So we find him speaking out for various causes, climate justice, freedom for the Palestinians, recognition of equal rights for the LGBTIQ plus community, and at his funeral yesterday, President Ramaphosa mentioned other causes that uh, the Archbishop had supported. What about us? We are at the start of a new year. How can we be bearers of good news for all? What is our particular role? What has God given us through our life circumstances? Where has God been leading us? What should we be committing ourselves to do in this year ahead? How can we become part of the light that shines in the darkness? We each have something different to contribute to those around us and to the world at large. We can make a difference. Archbishop Desmond himself once said, Do your little bit of good where you are. It's those little bits of good put together that overwhelm the world. So at the beginning of January of this year, let us dedicate ourselves to be good news people in this year ahead, both where we live and work, but wherever God may call us or lead us to. Let us not let anything limit us in our witness to the Incarnation, God among us in the life of Jesus. God can do amazing things through us. Let us be open to God and faithful that this may be a fruitful and rewarding year for us all. Amen.